I'm coming home. Before Ed Sheeran picked up a Brit Award for Best British Male Solo Artist and British Breakthrough Act. Before Ed Sheeran picked up a Grammy nomination for Song of the Year and Best New Artist. Before his then girlfriend Ellie Golding cheated on him with One Direction's Neil Horan. Before Ed Sheeran sold millions of records and had a song appear in the second installment of the Hobbit trilogy. Which totally makes sense to me. I mean, if anyone in Hollywood rocks the Hobbit look, it's him. Hmm. Well. I'm happy that a majority of the world don't look like me because um, <laughs> maybe less people will get laid. Ed set out on his own journey at the age of 14, leaving his small town, heading for the big city of London, England. He brought with him nothing but a bunch of clothes and a guitar. He started finding work as a guitar tech, as well as an opening act for a bunch of bands, and he started recording a whole bunch of EPs. In 2010, he bought a one-way ticket to Los Angeles with no contacts in town, where he played every music gig he could book. Actor, singer, comedian Jamie Foxx, he caught one of his shows and met up with Ed Sheeran after, not only offering him a bed, but a recording studio to work in. My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life of Ed Sheeran prior to fame, here for you on Before They Were Famous. And as always guys, let me know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Ed Sheeran was born on February 17th, 1991 in Halifax, West Yorkshire, England. He has an older brother Matthew who is a classical composer and a younger brother as well. Their parents are London born, but of Irish lineage. His father John is an art curator and lecturer, and his mother Emojin is a culture publicist turned jewelry designer. Together his parents ran Sheeran Law an independent art consultancy from 1990 to 2010. Now their work it typically took them to London and the family would enjoy their weekends traveling by car and they would enjoy a whole lot of music. Ed Sheeran recalls his favorites growing up were Bob Dylan, Eric Clapton, The Beatles and a little bit of Eminem when his parents weren't listening. And according to Ed, the album that first introduced him to music was Van Morrison's Irish Heartbeat. Although clearly obsessed with music, his childhood dream job was to become that of a train conductor. He started singing in the church choir at the age of four. He began teaching himself not only the guitar, but the cello, the piano, and slapping a bit of the bass. A moment of inspiration came when he traveled with his father to Ireland to catch a show of singer-songwriter Damien Rice, who they later met with backstage and spoke to, and Damien encouraged Ed to start writing his own music. He followed these orders and soon found himself enrolled at the Youth Music Theater and National Youth Theater in London. That's when he took off in his teens at just 14 to the big city again with nothing but his clothes and the guitar on his back or the clothes on his back and his guitar in hand. I don't know how he did it, but that's what he had. At 14, he began recording his first EP titled The Orange Room, which features four tracks. I Love You, Addicted, Misery, and Moody Ballad of Ed. At 15, he was making the right contacts. He became friends with another English singer-songwriter known now as Passenger. He also got to work creating two albums. One was self-titled, released in 2006, and the other one was Want Some, released in 2007. He began working the circuit, opening for more established acts such as Nislobi, The Noisettes, and Jay Sean. He also released another EP, You Need Me, in 2009. A year that would have Ed performing in as many as 300 stage shows, and when he wasn't taking the stage as a performer, well, he would take work as a guitar tech. It was until 2010 that Ed would take the next big step in his career, and it didn't come from as many contacts, it didn't come from as many live performances, it came from someone watching one of his videos online. Rapper Example found a video of Ed on a website known as SBTV, and invited Sheeran to be the opening act on his tour. Simultaneously, Ed dropped another EP featuring the track The A Team, a song that would open for him a whole lot of doors. Following this tour, Will Ed decided to take a little trip for himself to check out the next step in his career. He decided to go to sunny Los Angeles. At the age of 19, he arrived once again with little but his guitar and the clothes on his back. Knowing no one in town, he got to work booking as many open mics that would have him. One venue was the Foxhole, and one guest there that night was Jamie Foxx. Jamie, a performer through and through, he saw talent in Ed and immediately stayed after the show to chat with the young singer. Learning about his current homeless status, Phil Jamie offered him not only a bed, but access to his recording studio while he was in town. Ed Sheeran would pump out as many as three more EPs before he would get signed to Asylum Records. His debut album Plus, which led with the A-Team as the first single, well, that track was everywhere. Following this, well, he picked up awards and nominations both at home and internationally. He became a writer for other acts such as One Direction. He also became BFFs with Taylor Swift. He comes over and we're talking and we start writing and I was like, do you want to see my trampoline? I just got one. <laughs> and the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is Before They Are Famous. My name is Michael McCredden. Thanks for checking out my personal channel. I do all sorts of bios on here. I've done a lot of singers like Katy Perry and Adele and Lana Del Rey and uh, I don't know, a lot of rappers. Uh, yeah. 
So let me know who's next, who you wanna hear about, and uh, I'll be sure to get it done. Hope you guys are having a great holiday season. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Ed Sheeran on how much can you fit in his mouth. All right then. Is that it?